It's been a day, but I made it. This year, I turned 45. And instead of having a midlife crisis, I decided it was time to focus, work hard, and commit to making the things I dream about happen, even if they're hard. So I started by spending my 45th birthday in Ireland as my birthday present to me. After the months of planning and researching, I packed my bags and got on a plane for the very first time in 25 years. I have always dreamed about going to Ireland and as I researched my ancestry this year, an incredible discovery came to light. Down a twisty turny branch of my family tree, it appears uh, that I am distantly, although directly related to some very important, albeit controversial, people in Irish history. If the research is correct, Dermot McMurrow, King of Leinster, from 1126 to 1171 is my 25th and 27th paternal grandfather from two very distantly related family lines. And along the branches of these lines, there are some incredible historical characters. And honestly, it seems hard to believe that it could be true, but as I told my story along my journey in Ireland, people assured me that it's very possible. Learning all of this information gave me a great excuse to finally break out of my comfort zone and venture out into the world on a quest for knowledge. I plan on doing a deep dive on all of the main characters in this story as I continue my journey and learn more, but for now, I'll just tell the quick version of Dermot's story. He was born in 1110, a son of Donica McMurrow, King of Leinster and Dublin, and succeeded to his father's throne when he was just 16 years old. History does not remember him kindly. He was a brutal ruler and not a very well-liked dude. In 1153, he kidnapped Dervigilla, the wife of his rival, Tiernan O'Rourke, King of Brevney. Now, whether she was actually kidnapped or just went with Dermot willingly is up for debate. From what I've read, she went of her own volition while taking her dowry and like all of her stuff, including livestock, with the help of her brother. It was almost a thousand years ago, so who really knows? Anyway, Tiernan was obviously pissed, so he forms an alliance with Rory O'Connor, the High King of Ireland at the time, and together they exile him from Ireland. Dervigilla is sent back, or goes back to Tiernan, and Dermot flees Ireland in search of Henry II, King of England. Now, he wants to ask Henry for help reclaiming his kingdom, but Henry has got his hands full with his own stuff and doesn't directly help him, but he does grant his permission to ask his people for help. Enter Richard Fitzgilbert de Clare, better known as Strongbow. Yes, like the cider that is named after him. So Strongbow agrees to help him, and in return, he is promised Dermot's daughter Aoife's hand in marriage, and that he would inherit his title and lands when Dermot died. So, Dermot returns to Ireland with his new Norman allies, followed soon after by Strongbow and a second group of allies. They take Dublin and Waterford, and then on August 25th, 1170, Richard Fitzgilbert de Clare and Aoife McMurrow marry in Christchurch Cathedral in Waterford. Dermot died um, less than a year later, on May 1st, 1171, in Ferns, leaving his title and lands to his son-in-law Strongbow. Part of Aoife's dowry when she married being the Rock of Dumais or Dumais Castle near Port Leash. It's about an hour's drive from Dublin Airport and it felt like the perfect place to begin my adventures. So the very first thing I did when I got to Ireland, after having a panic attack about my phone not working and driving on the left side of the road from the right side of the car, 
without GPS or Google Maps was visit this spectacular ancient ruined fortress castle. sits on a dramatic limestone oak crop that rises 46 meters above the surrounding landscape. It's an imposing place with a tragic history and although not a lot is known about its early days, archaeologists have determined that it was built as an early Christian settlement in the early 800s. Around 843 it was plundered by Vikings and then eventually came into the possession of Dermot McMurrow then as part of Eva's dowry, it passed to Strongbow, then on to his future son-in-law, William Marshall. It was held by the Marshall heirs, then on to the Mortimers, who forfeited their lands to the crown in 1330. And then it passed to the O'Moores and was abandoned. It's believed that in the 1600s, it fell victim to Cromwell assaults, leaving it in the ruined state it's in today. Then at the end of the 18th century, Sir John Parnell began to restore Dunamay's keep to create a banqueting hall, but when he died, the project was abandoned. It's been a day, but I made it to Dunamis. I can't even process my feelings. I am overwhelmed and in awe. As I drove down the narrow country roads, getting my bearings in a brand new country, I looked up and in the distance, I caught my first glance of the rock. And my heart leapt in my chest. It was, it was real. I mean, obviously it was real, but I was seeing it with my own eyes. And I just sat in my car for a really long time just staring at it from a distance before beginning my exploration. And when it was time to leave, I didn't want to go. I felt that way about almost every single place I went to. I, I went through every section two or three times just to make sure I experienced everything there was to see. And Dunaway's castle is extremely atmospheric. In the bright morning sunlight on a hot summer's day, it was a lovely, cheerful place and a fabulous walk, but I would love to visit someday when the sky is overcast and threatening rain. I feel like the vibe would be completely different. If ghosts are real, Dunamace is the perfect place to haunt. And someday when I return to Ireland, it will be the first place I visit again. I'm doing it. I just got done at the Rock of Dunamace or Dunamace Castle. I am tired. I <laughs> I barely slept on the plane. It's uh it's quite intense this whole thing. I don't want to leave anywhere that I am. But I'm thirsty and that's just the first thing. I 
think I'm gonna just uh, go to the castle, to Huntington Castle. <clears throat> Check in and have a little nap. See where the day takes me from there. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with Scooby-Doo. Honestly, I still watch the original series at least once a year around Halloween. I've always been drawn to the spooky side of things, so in deciding the ultimate way to spend my 45th birthday, it was obvious that spending a night in a haunted castle was the way to go. Huntington Castle in Clonigal County Carlo is the ancient seat of the Esmond family who first came to Ireland in 1169 as part of the Norman force enlisted by Dermot McMurrow that included Strongbow. After learning the castle had a ghost or two and adorable peacocks, it seemed the obvious choice. The castle was built in 1626 on the site of an older structure as a garrison. I took a tour of the castle and learned so many interesting facts about the place, but the one that stuck with me the most was about a soldier in the 17th century who was stationed at the castle. He was sent out on a mission dressed in an enemy uniform, and when he came back, the guards didn't recognize him when he knocked on the front door and shot him through the murder hole. And it is said that his ghost still knocks on the door just as it did the night he was killed. During my stay, I didn't see or hear anything spooky, unfortunately, but I loved the experience all the same. Another feature of the castle to note is in the basement where the dungeons used to be. Uh, it's the former headquarters for the Temple of the Goddess, a church founded by Olivia Robertson, and as well as the sacred well of St. Bridget. It was such a fabulously cool and interesting place, and I am so happy I found it. clothes and what a day it has been it feels like it's already been a week i have seen more things today that i have only dreamed of than i could have dreamed and it's day one i still have seven more days i don't know how i'm gonna keep this up what a life living in a castle My first day in Ireland and my 45th birthday. What a wild ride. I took a flight for the first time in 25 years. I saw Ireland with my own eyes. I learned to drive on the other side of the road from the other side of the car and because my phone wasn't working I learned that I can navigate without GPS or Google Maps in a country I've never been to just like the olden days. I saw my first two castles and spent my birthday dinner accompanied by a very polite peacock. All things considered, a very successful day and one I will never forget. Stay tuned for day two. Oh.